ESPN's Mark Kestisher, also a Gilderland native. How about that? Joining us now, 104.5 The Team, it's Armin and Levac. Cassie, how you doing? Armin Levac, good to be on with you guys. Good to be back on in Albany, as always. Yeah, always good to have you. Now, the World Series, you've been part of the uh, World Series coverage with ESPN Radio right here on 104.5 The Team, and the Giants are on the verge of winning their third World Series in five years. How are they so good year after year, Kesty? You know, it's hard to figure because even when we're coming down the stretch this year, if you would have asked me back in mid-September what I thought the chances of the Giants were, you know, I'm thinking, hey, you know, they'll be lucky just to get the wild card. After that, who knows? You know, we all thought when you see Clayton Kershaw in anybody's rotation that uh, I had picked the Dodgers to go to the World Series. Um, and then you've got the Nationals who, you know, finally kind of bounced back after last year. And, and San Francisco's an afterthought. In fact, if I go back, I probably picked Pittsburgh to win that wild card game in Pittsburgh, even though Madison Bumgarner was pitching. So I guess that's a long way around to say I don't know what it is about October and the even years, Bruce Bochy, uh, underrated bullpen, scrappers, whatever you want to call them, they always seem uh, to get hot this time of year. But if you ask me, I'm still not sold they're going to win this thing with the last two games in Kansas City. Wow. Well, Kestia, I mean, I appreciate the honesty. I think anybody who says they picked this matchup is a liar. <laughs> uh, well, I got a guy at, at, in Bristol who's uh, from Kansas City, so he picked half of it, but he, there's no way he picked uh, the Royals to play the Jets. So he's been picking Kansas City for the last 29 years, is what you're telling exactly. me. Exactly. So you got to be right like the clock every once in a while. Like, uh, like the clock that doesn't work, I should say. Well, speaking about you know Kansas City, Ned Yost gets all this criticism, and here he is with a Royals team that only people from Kansas City picked in the World series is he uh, is he underrated i you know he's quirky even to the people who follow the team you know he drives them crazy with some of his decisions uh you know we always kind of yell at our managers you know if you're a yankees fan you're always kind of yelling at girardi and the binder and always going to the book and you know it worked for buck showalter to a t this year up until the alcs um there's something about a guy who kind of shoots from the hip that the old school guys love but even the stuff that Yost does makes you shake your head. But for whatever reason, uh, it seems to have worked out this year for the most part. So, um, yeah, I guess he's underrated in the fact that he got this team that was a couple games under 500 in July, you know, to play great ball in the second half of the year. And uh, it seems to, you know, everything he touches, everything he calls seems to kind of work out. So I don't know if they're winning in spite of him or if he is underrated, probably somewhere in the middle. Um, but I think it's funny just you know to read and listen to some of the Kansas City fans. They almost aren't quite sure uh, what to expect from him on a nightly basis. Mark Kastisher of ESPN and Gilderland native on 104.5 The Team, your home for New York sports. And Kasty, as you've been a part of this World Series broadcast in the postseason with the ESPN radio, obviously we've seen Jake Peavy just get rocked uh, by the opposition multiple times and, and not, not you know been himself. Do you have confidence, uh, you know, you already said that you don't believe uh, the Giants necessarily could pull this thing off in, in the next two games. Does that have to do with PD being on the mound tonight? It kind of does. Um, you know, his numbers weren't terrible going into his first World Series start for this postseason, even though he didn't go deep in his uh, LCS start. But he just did not, I don't know if it was, didn't have confidence in his stuff or just didn't have his stuff the first time around. You know, maybe he digs deep and gives whatever uh, he was able to figure out after he left Boston, after he was traded, and uh, whatever he did the second half of the year for San Francisco. But uh, it's a combination of, I'm not sure if I trust him, and, uh, you know, this kid Ventura just throws so hard, and he's got the crowd behind him. Um, and if, if TV can't get it to the good part of the bullpen, you know, I, we could see like a game two meltdown like we saw earlier in this series. So that is kind of the theory behind this could be a winner take all uh, game seven. And if it's close, I'm hearing, you know, Bumgarner is offered uh, to pitch tonight. So that could be another asterisk, you know, when we talk about how managers manage in the postseason and they manage completely differently. Who knows what Yost is going to do tonight in a must-win situation. And then, of course, you got someone like Bumgarner who can, on one day's rest, uh, come back out and maybe give his team an inning. Would that be completely crazy to you if, if, if Bumgarner adds to the legend, comes out tonight, shuts down the game somehow and gets the win for the Giants? Uh, it would it, be uh, a great story, but, you know, I think we saw it, what, like about 10 years ago. I think Randy Johnson did it for the Diamondbacks yeah. coming out of their bullpen. Uh, you know, some of these horses, they're, ju they're just amazing. You know, the innings they can log, 
the power they could throw with, uh, the way he's matured. He's only 25. It's unbelievable. I could see him, yeah, coming out. It's just like, uh, you know, uh, playing a little toss on the off day, uh, going out there and unloading for an inning and, and shutting someone down. That would It would certainly add to his legend. I don't think it would surprise me, considering it's him and some of the guys who may have done it in the past, even though you know not so recent, except for the Randy Johnson thing. But uh, that would be something else to see the uh, – See the Giants, and he would—he was already what MVP of the NLCS could be World Series MVP too. How many beers would he drink then? <laughs> what did he do last time? Five? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think he's been was working it a his holiday way out. five pack. He no. might have to go. I he's up uh, to he six. To... No, yeah, he's up to six. It was four, five, and then six. So <laughs> he's, he's going to have to up it somehow. Yeah, <laughs> Keg stand. levac has been working on that challenge too. Mark Kessler <laughs> of ESPN Radio on 104.5 The Team, your home for New York sports. Now, Cassie, uh, tonight the NBA season opens up. As you can believe, it's already here. I want to ask you, you're going to be covering uh, Mavs Spurs at 6 o'clock. If you don't mind joining us again, I want to ask you if the Spurs have enough left in the tank to repeat. Can you join us again at 6 tonight? Yeah, no, that sounds good. ESPN Radios and Gilderland native Mark Kassischer with us now, 104.5 The Team. It's Armin in the back. And Cassie, the NBA season tips off tonight. You are a part of the Mavs and Spurs broadcast on ESPN Radio. Do the Spurs have enough left in the tank to repeat this year, Cassie? It's a good question. Um, they, they, From what I've been told, uh, Mark Stein, who's on our broadcast uh, tonight, uh, you know, he tells me these guys are in great shape. Tim Duncan looks great. I know... Uh, Tony Parker didn't play with the French team this year for the FIBA tournament over the summer. Manu Ginobili uh, had some injury over the summer, didn't play for Argentina. You know, so he says they're rested. Uh, this is the first time in a long time that you have a championship team who is bringing back every single part. And when the last broadcast we did for the NBA, June, whatever it was, the 20th, uh, we watched those last three games when they totally took apart the Miami Heat. You know, you hadn't seen a team play such team basketball like they had in a long time. So I don't see them resting on their laurels. That's not the way uh, Popovich works it. I don't know why they, they uh, you know, can't or haven't put it together, although you could argue that they were easily back-to-back champs if Ray Allen doesn't hit that shot, you know, uh, the summer before last. Uh, so uh, even though there's a lot of age and a lot of mileage, and, and still people aren't picking them to win the West. I, I could see it happening. Kesty, you being from uh, Gildalyn, do you follow Glens Falls native Jimmer Fredette for for very much? Um, I do when he plays. And, in fact, I did a game uh, in Chicago last year when he was with the Bulls briefly. And uh, I'd never actually met him before but had the opportunity to say hi, uh, drop the Gildalyn card. And he just <laughs> seems like a, a real good guy. And I hope he uh, you know, gets his chance finally. Do you think that will happen in New Orleans now that he's part of the Pelicans he gets to shoot? It's possible, but you know what? That that's a team on the rise, and you know they they're getting healthy now. You know maybe he could be part of that uh, second unit. I really like New Orleans to break through this year in the West. Maybe not top four. Uh, you know you're hoping maybe seven or eight. The way you're talking, maybe fifty right. wins might be requisite to get the eight seed this you know this year, like it almost was last year. Um, you know, so it all it all comes down to time and place. Maybe it is the right place. Uh, I like his attitude. Um, I remember. Uh, J.J. Redick, in his second or third year, I forget where he was. He might have been in Orlando. and It was a game we had uh, that I worked with the late Dr. Jack Ramsey. And I remember Dr. Jack pulled him aside and told him, you know, keep the chin up and all that. And he really almost didn't look like an NBA player to me as far as I didn't know what his position would be. I didn't know if he could create a shot for himself. He was just a catch-and-shoot guy. And I think J.J. Redick's turned himself into a pretty decent player um, in the second unit, uh, you know, when he was with the Clippers. So uh, maybe that's the same kind of track that uh, Jimmer will take. We'll have to wait and see. ESPN's Mark Kastasher on 104.5 The Team. You're home for New York Sports. He's part of NBA, ESPN's ra- uh, ESPN Radio's uh, coverage of the NBA opening night tonight. And, uh, Cassie, in regards to the New York Knicks, we are just not very optimistic after the preseason. What do you think about Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher in their inaugural season this year in New York? Well, I, I, you know, before the preseason, and you just look at it on paper, you know, you, you can kind of talk yourself into, all right, you know, maybe, you know, shoot for that eight seed in the East. Last year, Atlanta had it with 38 wins, so maybe, you know, all you need is a 500 season. That's probably what it'll take in the East to make the playoffs. Um, the the preseason, which I know we're not supposed to take a lot of stock into, but uh, it's going to take a while for these guys to get going. I'm not saying they're not going to get it, but. 
uh, early on, it seems to be a process, and, and even for Derek Fisher in his first year as a head coach, you know, it seems like this is going to take a little bit for him to get going. You know, I think if, you know, some of those like guys like uh, Bargnani, uh, you know, can get healthy and stay healthy, um, you know, maybe there'll be enough parts there. We'll see. I, right now, I'm, I, I'm kind of uh, on, on your side, which is I'm not sure what we're going to get. Um, if I was to, you know, right now ask if they'd make the playoffs, I'd probably say no. I think I'm, I'm going to have to wait and see what happens at All-Star break and, and figure out if they've made any progress. But right now I just don't see the pieces. I'm not sure uh, if, if they got the right guys to run the triangle. You know, no. we'll all uh, kind of find out together. I hear you. Too many questions, not enough answers yet, right? Yeah, I think that's probably the, the short to what I just took 60 <laughs> seconds to say. No, but no, you nailed it. Yeah. But it was masterful, and it sounded like that Gildel and education's paying off. <laughs> hey, you know what? I don't know if right now they're going to appreciate that, but yeah, I tried. <laughs> ESPN's Mark Kessinger. Kessie, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Enjoy uh, the coverage tonight of the NBA opening season, and enjoy it, and we'll uh, be in touch in the future. Yes, I think as a promotional announcement, most people might hear the World Series, but uh, I think ESPNRadio.com, you could, you could find us yeah. for NBA opening night, and uh, we look forward to a, a great season. We got uh, LeBron James and the Cavaliers opener on Thursday, so if you miss us tonight, catch us then. Good to be with you guys. Perfect, and Thanks, we, have, we have you on the regular basis with your play-by-play here on the team, so we look forward to it every time we get you, man. Good to talk to you, Armin Levac. Excellent. Have a great day.